story of blushes and how we started, it began with me. I was sort of solo acoustic act. And I got speaking to a guy for a friend that was in a band. And he basically said, look, you're not going to get very far sort of doing the acoustic things. You'll end up going round and round and round just doing open mic nights, pretty much your whole music life. And he was pretty straight to the point with it, but it helped. And he, he listened to some of my sort of like acoustic demos. And he basically said, like, they've got potential, but I mean, People aren't really looking for acoustic artists anymore. They need, they want something that's a bit more exciting. I think it, I was at work and I ended up calling Jacob on a break. Uh, I called him up and I was like, Cobb, hey man, this is really random. We haven't spoken in like two years since we left school. <laughs> Do you want to be in a band with me? And like, how, how committed can you be to it and stuff, basically? And Brad basically messaged me, I think a year after school finished, like, do you want to start a band? For me, it was kind of like the last sort of shot I'd have it like taking it kind of seriously. I went to his and we jammed. He had like a loop like, pedal and like his acoustic guitar and I set up drums and he was just showing me his songs that he'd written. And we did like, I think, two sessions of that. We were like, this isn't really working, just two of us, we need more people. So we were asking around and we got out of a tiff. So I went to school with Jacob and Bradley. Bradley used to play guitar for me in the school assembly and I used to sing. Never used to play any instruments, so like Bradley used to do that for me. A couple of years later I got a message from Bradley being like, hey Tiff, just wondering if you wanted to start a band. But she she basically was similar to Cobb. She was like, yeah, I'm pretty free, like I don't know what I'm doing with my life at the moment. So yeah. And I was like, sweet. And then I was like, do you know anyone from college? Because her college was quite a musical college. Then I knew someone and I knew him from college called George Harrison. Brought him in. When he left for uni, he got Sammy to be the guitarist. I was in a previous band called Raw Set, and we had a gig where Blushes were supporting. It was their first ever gig, and I remember watching them and being like blown away, thinking, "Man, you guys have got something special." Especially Brad, because it was something about his stage presence. Um, really fun, man. Like, at the time, uh, there wasn't bass. So I thought I'd be a bit cheeky and just message Brad and be like, if you need a bass guitarist, I'm happy to fill in. And then it turned out that their old guitarist, George, was uh, leaving. But we, we didn't have any, any bass at all. I think we picked up on it, especially when we went to record the first song. So Tiff was open to the idea of her being taught how to play like just the three notes and the keyboard and stuff. So then we had a kind of working as a like, kind of normal standard band, like bass comments, vocals, drums, that kind of thing. And it was it kind of got easier to write songs after that. I'd say the style of Blushes is very much anything goes. It's, it's a tricky one. We, we always say we're sort of like a cocktail of different genres. Like we, we get some like jazz going out there, R&B, hip hop, indie rock. So it's just a mixture of like, because we're all influenced by a lot of different music, it's just all of that crushed up into one big ball. Yeah, anything goes really. Like, all our individual strengths and like, weaknesses come together like, to make this sort of like a little sound. When, when you think of an indie band, you think of guitars, bass, drums, and that's when most indie bands will fit into that section. We kind of don't purely because we've got that synth bass, it makes us slightly not quite heavy enough to be indie rock, but not soft enough to be indie pop. It's kind of hard to pinpoint it down to like one style, but I think that's what makes us so unique. It's just literally like it's not one genre, it's so many like thrown into one. With our creative process of writing, it's been very, very different. So, like, as we progressed as a band, it's only been two years for us, and like a lot has changed since then. So, the first few songs, they were purely just from my acoustic material. A number of ways it can start, so it can start like in the living room. Or like when we're jamming, any one of us can have like an idea and one of us can just have a concert and be like, hey, keep playing that and that'll be the kind of sort of jam part of it. I think it's it is a matter of we'll come up with little ideas separately and then we'll come together and try and like bring that into a song and like finalise it and chop it up. But it's been quite intense because we all try so so hard when we're practicing. But like all of us do. So the living room is like a a big deal to us because it's where all of us have like put all of our emotions into our performance kind of thing but there's no need to 
to you. You know, it's a good practice. When we're not downstairs with the live situation, we've got like a recording situation. We'll be in Jacob's room right here. And um, he'll be sat in the big chair by the computer and he'll show us some ideas he's got on his computer. I think it's a really good way of doing it because um, it's, it's very homely. Like, it's a bedroom and you do feel very at home. Whereas when you're in a studio, you know, you're paying for it. It's time and money. So, like, you feel you do feel that stress and it kind of cuts away even if you don't want it to it does cut away from the creative ideas like that you would come out with naturally when you know you're not pushed for time so i think it's quite a good way to like write stuff especially when you're like at home and you're, you're all together just chilling basically all four of us together i'd say are oh, blushing it's, it's not one single one of us really yeah we had the news that enemy wanted to have a photo shoot us under the radar which is pretty bizarre and that day in itself Amazing. Yeah. And it's a it's just amazing that sort of disused mechanics that's now been turned into a location uh, filming and photo shoots. It's this big kind of industrial looking room. So we turned up, we've got these top photographers, top fashion like stylists, makeup artists, um, hair stylists. Yeah, we thought this isn't right, we shouldn't be here. Yeah, no, so it was mad to go from getting a like and a retweet to then working with and VO5 NME, like, mad. Oh, it was so weird, they because that's a normal day for them. That's a normal day in the office for them, guys. This was all really normal, but for us, we just couldn't believe what was going on. But yeah, the whole day was insane. Um, but yeah, it was like, an amazing experience. It was so good and really nice to like, actually feel like we had something so in common with them it wasn't just they didn't make you feel like we were just a little band in the middle of nowhere like you could tell that they appreciated us and like were trying to make us realize how much we were worth and be like guys you're good you know so it was, it was amazing the blushes i think we all obviously want the ultimate goal of getting signed to a major label uh, being able to make it apple time so i think just kind of staying constantly focused, constantly moving up to so like, what's the next kind of echelon of music and like, music industry that's like going to be on there. But yeah, the main one is just to create and write something that really hits not just like one or two people in the fields, but like all of our fans and people that aren't fans of Blushes. But to go, yeah, do you know what? That, that song they did, I don't really rate band, but that song, I got that. I think it's just getting to that level that we're happy with, really. And it's just trying to do one better constantly, I think. So I think, yeah, we're all four of us, I think, are aiming for the big time to hit that mark. And hopefully we'll get there. I'm happy with what we've achieved at the moment. So we say we don't ever. I'm happy to have done what we've done. It's been pretty, uh, yeah, pretty amazing. Popcorn on the heart. Let it simmer with some sugar and some butter, baby. That's enough. You're that honey on my lips. Call me an addict, baby, because I just can't resist. I don't know what to think anymore. I'm not John, I got Winsky, nothing short of divine. Oh, why, oh, why, oh, why, oh, why are you so damn pure? Crystallizing my emotion, child, according to him, she becomes my cure. Down to the very last tea, you are everything perfection can bring. Like 
from big dark coat, just thick as smoke, hot every negative thing. That's the way it's gonna be as long as we can keep the milk from going sour. Give the cream to my clock while my heart won't stop, you're my lower sour. Yeah. I don't know what to do anymore. Disguise me, you are. 